I was born and raised here at Thermopolis. I'm fourth generation native, uh, so my roots go deep. You gotta understand how Thermopolis came about. There was no access into the Bighorn Basin except from the north and coming in from the east. We're bounded by mountains and uh, natural topography all around us. It was difficult to get in here. The reservation had all of this country that, that was south of Owl Creek, but there was a little notch right at the mouth of Owl Creek where it joins the, the Bighorn River that uh, Ben Hansen took out a, a claim for a town site there. He had a, a little settlement started there, and so they had this shooting over there, and a, a Dr. Schulke, he was the only resident doctor in the area, came over from Lander to treat the gunshot wound. He had been here before, and it was attracted to the hot springs. And so the folks at the mouth of Owl Creek decided they wanted to have a post office there in their settlement, so they didn't have a name for their town. And that's when Dr. Schulke and a, a couple of old Irishmen by the name of McGill and O'Reilly, they got together and a couple of the neighbors around and, and they decided they'd name it Thermopolis because they, they would name it after the hot springs, thermal for hot or boiling and, and uh, polis for city. The post office actually moved uh, down to the old town, we call it old town now, in, uh, 1895. The deal was around the Big Springs was all reservation. There wasn't any settlement allowed here. So I think there were probably politics involved, but anyway, they bought 10 miles square from the Indians because the game had been depleted one thing or another, and they got it for 90 some cents an acre. It automatically opened it up for white man settlement here, and, and in 1896, there was a town at the mouth of Owl Creek. By 97, everything had moved here and they just abandoned that town out there. They about more or less picked up the old buildings and just came this way and where the deal was that the state of Wyoming would own a one mile square around the Big Springs and that would be set apart as the state reserve and the rest of that 10 mile square would be opened up to white man settlement. One of the stipulations that when uh, the land was bought from the Indians was Chief Washakie said that the water had to be free to use. So they, to this very day, we have the state bathhouse, which is free to use. And it's uh, water comes straight from the hot springs to that. And the Indians used it way before the white man was here. The Crow and the Shoshone and the Sioux, the Blackfeet came into this area. And, and uh, so it was used by several different tribes. When the white man got opportunity to use it, well then they naturally commercialized it. And so anything outside the free water was concessionaires came in with the plunges and the, and the hotels and things that we have today. This area was established for agricultural purposes, uh, ranching and, and farming mostly. And that has diversified a lot through the years, but when they discovered oil here, it changed the country. And when the train came here in 1910, it opened up trade and uh, ways to get your product in and out of here. Well, probably our biggest boom years were in the 50s and the 60s. We had Empire Oil had a uh, refinery here in town and, and employed a lot of people. And the, there was mining operations still going on in the, in the 50s and, the, and into, a little into the 60s. And the oil fields were booming pretty good in those years. so. I think we probably peaked around, I would say five or 6,000 people probably in the county at that time. Tourism is a, is a pretty big business. It's year round because that hot water, the, the plunges and the hotels are open, they cater to folks year round. The state park has just gone through a 20 year plan uh, looking ahead. There'll be some changes in the state park. Uh, a lot of the old things will stay. The, things that really draw the people is the, is the terraces that people like to walk and the swinging bridge and the, of course Monument Hill. It's not many places you see a hill with a sign on it. We're not really isolated but we're not in the thick of things. We have one stoplight and that's plenty. I don't know you can go a lot of places in the country but uh, you know there are certain places that just strike you as a, as a good place to live. <laughs>